Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Designing Midlife podcast. My name is Taj, and I am extremely excited today to be recording my very first interview for you and bringing you a very dear friend of mine, what I like to call our mental health maven, Miss Duchess Rothman Jefferson. You're listening to Designing Midlife, a podcast about today's midlife woman. Ladies, we're more youthful, active, and demanding than any midlife generation before. Join Taj as she dispels the notion of crisis, learn to conquer in all facets from health to career, and design the midlife of your dreams. Well, thank you for actually allowing me to come on to this fabulous podcast. Before you start to chat, I just want to kind of take a few moments and kind of introduce all the fabulousness that is Dutch. So we have here today Duchess Rothman Jefferson. Uh, Duchess holds a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology and a master's in mental health counseling. Duchess has been working in the mental health and social services field for over 20 years as a counselor, clinical program director, and executive director, as well as 17 years of experience in behavioral health care services, specializing in joint commission accreditation and quality assurance. She is certified EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Did I say that correctly? (laughs) In order to treat victims with anxiety, trauma, and post-traumatic stress disorders, her numerous roles has led her to Uh, not only be experienced in treating clients of diverse populations and backgrounds, including adolescents, high-profile clients, chemical dependency clients, and those suffering from dual disorders. Duchess is especially recognized for experience in holistic clinical program development, Six Sigma leadership, and organizational restructuring. And all of this badassery has culminated into you starting your own consulting practice in uh, four years ago now in 2016, the Rothman Group, uh, which serves to assist organizations lacking compliance and accreditation needed to be recognized as a competitor in the field. And what we're also going to talk about is how this crazy year has brought you to launch your second business, which is uh, Shield Essentials, that is dedicated to helping essential workers and children with personal protective equipment during this mad COVID time. So, Doug, this is you, Duchess Rothman Jefferson. Oh, my gosh. To definitely provide some insight that I've been dealing with and as as well as um some barriers that I've been facing being in the field for over 20 years and having extensive knowledge in substance abuse and mental health. I always knew that I had to circle back to you first and foremost, in particularly because of what just we all have been experiencing this year as a result of not only COVID, but you know, the protests and George Floyd and the BLM movement and, you know, just just all of the above, all of these things and kind of the toll it takes on ourselves, uh, our children, everyone in its entirety, how it affects all of us mentally and how do we cope and how do we navigate and kind of just kind of be able to see past this, right? But, you know, before I get into all of the gems that I know that you're going to share with us today, you know, how have you been doing these past six months or probably even more than six months now? I feel like I'm at a theme park. I feel like I'm at Bush Gardens getting ready to go on to the next type of uh, roller coaster. Adjusting to the new normal, homeschooling, the lack of travel, being able to just go to the store and not um, forgetting your mask, your gloves and trying to be protected at the same time and not being rude to other people when you see them don't wear a mask and you're like, oh my God, do you not know what's going on? I come from a family who is in the healthcare. I have a niece, she's an ICU nurse and I see her struggles and her her pain that she's been having. And my husband, he's a fireman and they're tested weekly. Um, so I see all of that and mm-hmm. trying to hold a right. balance is mm-hmm. in, Mm-hmm. Very difficult. It, I mean, you touched on so much there because you're you kind of have like a 360 view, right? Your husband, which that slipped me for a minute. He's on the front lines, so he's out there. He's a first responder. 
uh, you have family members that are working in the medical field or in the hospital. And then, you know, you, you may or may not be seeing it so much in terms of uh, patients, because I don't know how much you do that now as in terms of being hands on, but you're, you're in the space, you're in the industry. So you hear you're a lot more in tune than myself or, or probably most of my listeners uh, to what's going on. And, you know, do you find that, do you think that this period has it? Is there a lot of commonalities in terms of what we're experiencing this year to any other type of traumatic year or incident, or has there been something different that has stood out this year for you? So we had 9-11, which is something that the country, I want to say the country suffered in a sense that we, this is something that happened. COVID, we first handily know someone has been affected by it. I've lost two people to COVID, very close to my family. The NBA, the NFL, all the sports agency, they just, they created a bubble. It it was kind of crazy that everything just basically shut down. A lot of my intensive outpatient treatment centers are had to close down because clients could not come to the facility. Wow. So then what happened when you don't have your treatment center to go to? Then what happens with those people that need that? So out of... 20 or so treatment centers that I was surveying, seven of them had to shut down during this whole COVID. So people, and it was very sad because they catered to children and adults, uh, geriatrics, and it was really sad. People weren't coming out. People were definitely afraid when it first initially hit. And that's what's been happening. There's been an increase on substance abuse. There's been an increase in suicide. The hotline, the suicide hotline, a girlfriend I know that works there, she said it's been nonstop. They need more people. They need more clinicians. Just been an increase also in domestic violence. Wow. I mean, I have heard the reports of increase in domestic violence and, and things like that. And, you know, I, even in conversations in the house or, or around with other people, and you you kind of, sometimes you kind of dismiss it as, oh, you know, we're all locked down. We're all in quarantine. We're all in too many, you know, in each other's faces too much. We're going to get on each other's nerves. But then, but it's a much deeper level to that, right? People are acting out in ways that I've never seen before in this field, being in this field for a very long time. You know, and I, I could even think back on some moments for myself in the past six months where, you know, I, I have my husband and my two boys, as you know, and then it's, I'm the only one as the the woman in the house. And there are times where I just got to take for a drive. It's just, it just feels, you know, just overwhelming. Um, and then, you know, there's no, there's no escape. There's no outlet you know, for me, um, I guess the quarantine aspect too has really deeply heightened the stressors this year. Oh, absolutely. Like you said, we're not traveling, right? We can't, we can't even run and hang out in the mall or go to, you know, be comfortable of going to a, a dinner and a movie because, you know, just the whole sense of the virus and how uncomfortable that has made everyone, our freedoms now have just kind of been squashed in a sense, right? Because we, we have to take care of ourselves. So yeah, it's really, really trying time. So but when you speak of your clients, and even from a business perspective, you know, I didn't know that, I mean, that's probably a good 40% that has um, had to shut down. They had to shut down. A lot of them did not qualify for the resources of getting the PP loan because they're a small, they're smaller, they're smaller. Unlike the other facilities are much larger that my detoxes and my inpatient facilities have boomed, which is sad, but good for the, but at the same time, you know, it, it is unfortunately as a business and that's what they're dealing with. They are helping people in the process. However, they have to take a, a different approach in how they let people into the treatment center. There's a COVID protocol. You can't just walk into a building. You're screened outside. You're tested. And then they have to do the rapid testing to see if you do have COVID. And if you do, then you're quarantined. So it's, it's so many different things that larger organizations that have the resources that smaller agency cannot, just can't compete. So, and a lot of things have affected insurances. If you don't, if you don't have a job, then you don't have insurance. 
sad. So you cannot go to a private treatment center. You can't go to your private practitioner. A lot of agencies have incorporated telemedicine to try to help as much as possible, but they're overwhelmed as well. Wow. So outside of telemedicine, um, because that is, you know, just as a reaction to, you know, our reality that has grown tremendously. But outside of that, is there any other new things that you're seeing in your industry from a treatment perspective that you feel is helping that wasn't generally being used in the past? Or are there new mes- methods? Or are we also doing counseling via telemedicine? Or are, are there more hotlines? Or do we find that, you know, there's an increase in people reaching out for help? Do you know? Yeah. So all of our infrastructure is being overwhelmed by an inability to provide to everyone. There's definitely been an increase, and I definitely want to applaud um, Charlemagne, the God, on uh, 1035. He's been a big component in saying it's okay to go to therapy, right. and that's why the importance of self-care has definitely helped me. Um, having those little breaks, and it's okay. You know, I have a, I have a therapist. I speak to her. Um, every other weekend, actually, we do a little 15 minute check in, um, because it's important. A lot of people have been reaching out, they are FaceTime, there's, there's different organizations that provide free platforms, Black Girls Therapy, the Therapy Network, there's so many different avenues that people can go to, and they'll offer 30 minute counseling, a quick check in. And of course, we have our own local 311, and then 1-800- 96 uh, abuse is another one that people call if a suspicion of abuse. But I definitely have seen an increase in people coming out and saying, I, I have a problem. It's okay. I even commending my daughter and her friends, the creativity, they started their own little podcast. It's called The Pot is Hot. And where they're just navigating through this new normal, whereas they're young African American women. Right their anxiety in a sense, right? It could have been handled in so many different ways. Right. And they are socializing through, you know, Instagram or Snapchat, but positively. And I'm so proud of them, you know, the way that they're, you know, they're expressing themselves. And for them to be able to figure out a healthy way to kind of filter and not, you know, just not only what they may be feeling or being confused about or going through, but also assist other people who are tuning in, their peers, their friends, other teenagers, um, to kind of just, let's just talk about, you know, what's happening. So, you know, yeah, really big kudos to Taylor for that, because you know, we, we hear so much of the opposite extreme, right? The sad stories that come out of just needing a, uh, an outlet to express yourself and, or be heard or be seen. And, 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 and they were, they, they did it in a healthy way. So I, I was really, really happy to see that, you know, it brings me to a good point because I know there are a lot of parents out there that don't know um, what to do. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we experience it. We talk to our teenagers, you know, the, you know, the lips are zip. And, you know, if, if we're feeling in this time, kind of like an out of body experience, right. If we're feeling that way and they are in a sense, um, just shut down because, you know, we're still not back in school and, you know, yeah, we can call our friends on the phone or like you said, we have social, uh, but it's still, it's different, right? You know, how, do, how, how can we tell parents to, or what are some of the things that parents can do to not only urge their teenagers or younger um, kids to open up, but also to help, you know, what can we tell them to tell their parents? the kids as well, you know, make sure you're doing this or not doing this or um, outside of just, you know, mom and dad are here to talk to you whenever you need to, you know, like, you know, what else can we be looking for or doing or offering that could help? Um, You've been really good with your, your kids where that's concerned. Well, not to sound so elementary when I say this, get to their level, right? Do the things that they enjoy, not the things that we want them to do. So what I have discovered in order to have a better relationship with my, my nine-year-old, I play video games with him. So tell me, tell me about this. You know, what are we doing? Show me. Oh, mom, you know, this is how you, you know, jump to the next level. And, and he is so excited to be 
teach me how to play this game, that it would be ours. Okay, let, you know, let's go outside, mom. Let's do something else. Engaging in them in the way that they feel comfortable. Yeah, I, that may sound elementary to you, but it's actually not to me because I mean, oh my gosh, how, how many times do we talk? But I, when I go into my 18 year old now room, when I go into his room, um, which is very, he's very much in his own world and in his space, you know, I just sit on the bed and I am like, oh, so what's going on? You know, and I expect him to respond. <laughs> it's, it's cryptic language that I get. And it's just always trying and trying and trying and trying. But I, I'm honest, I have not taken that route because ever probably very few that I've ever taken the time to take that route because you know, like you say, it's going on their level, right? And it's not, it's not me milling around the house doing my thing and just kind of checking in, hey, what's going on with you today? Or uh, how's it going? Or, you know, how's your day been? Or, you know, how was school today? Or how's the history teacher? Or, you know, that kind of information, but never in the strategic approach or, you know, let's do family game night and let's see where, you know, that kind of takes us. And I think, prior to me doing like, oh, a light bulb went off, is that I, I would have him come to the, okay, come to the table, and let's just talk. And he's like, what? I'm, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> um, let's talk is not, that's not reaching him. And as far as my teenager, the way that I was able to engage with her and her friends is like, okay, let's bake a cake. She loves baking. She definitely got that trait from my mother. And during that process, just, you know, how's everything going? And, and I would ask her, well, how do you put your feeling to an emoji? And she's like, my emoji today would be used one. And she'll show me. And I'm like, okay, all right. And deep down, it's like, I'm like, oh my God, what does that mean? And like, <laughs> what is she saying to me? I, I don't have an iPhone. And I'm like, okay, I think that's the confused emoji. <laughs> that's definitely not the one that she's telling me. And for me, being able to do the things that she enjoys has definitely been a a success. Coming, I'm thinking of different ways myself based on my two and, you know, what they're into and what they kind of spend their free time doing. The first, you know, definitely I do have my moments. I'm like, okay, how can I break barriers with these children and us to have a a conversation and me do my check-in and take off the therapist's hat? just be mom and be present is engaging in the activities that they enjoy and it has worked wonderfully yeah no it's 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 so crucial to get into that space with them to just kind of you know it's just so much going on right and this year the stressors of this year and um has just added a whole different element to it i think we're all just kind of thrown off of our own vibe um and trying to see, you know, the light at the end of this tunnel. And and when is that? When is that light going to come? We don't know. So that also is a little bit of a stressor as well, because I I don't think any of us actually thought it would have been this long. I think we thought, you know, oh, by the time fall came around and school started, the kids would be back in school and this was going to be a couple of months and, you know, it's gone. And, you know, who would have thought that we would be the worst in the world as a first just over 200,000. Right. And like you said, I as well know people um, either close to my family or in my family that have lost people to the virus. And, you know, it, it's real and it's unnerving. Us as women, um, you know, we're midlife. Uh, we have our families we're taking care of. Um, but not only the kids, we also have, um, you know, for me, it's my grandma. For you, it's your mom. You know, we, you know, we have family support. We're not the only ones that they rely on. You know, there is we're both of large families, but we kind of have it coming at different ends of where we have to check in, right, and navigate. And then we also have to it's always the balancing act to, you know, how do we bring it around to ourselves as well? You know, our self-care and what do we have to be doing, not only mentally, but physically and our, how do we eat and all of that stuff, trying to get through. And, you know, I've always been really impressed with how you navigate that because you're like, no girl, my facial is Friday. <laughs> Come with me if you want to, but I'll be there. Madeline is waiting. <laughs> you know? You, whereas I always pass those things up, I still haven't created that self-care discipline that I know that I need to, 
but you're very disciplined that way. Whether either it's your skincare or even your nutrition, or even it's going cycling or, you know, whatever it is that you know that you need to do to take care of Duchess. Um, how do you, how do you gain that discipline? Because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with it. I'm, so many of us women out there struggle with that. I can say that it, COVID did not bring that on. I've always had that self-discipline. And when it came to self-care, um, working in addiction for 20 years and countless people that I've lost, either helping through um, therapy or coworkers through addiction, because a lot of people who are in recovery tend to recovering um, from addiction or they tend to become therapists and they relapse and it's, it's a whole vicious cycle. Um, I said that to say that I decided, I think it was like 2010, I was like, I need to check out. I need to have a moment for myself because I'm getting... My job is emotionally and physically, it's draining. And I'm listening to these stories. I need to have a moment by myself or it's just me and no kid. And my, my husband signed up for it many years ago, so he's aware. <laughs> that's the spotting. That's the facial. That's me sitting in the, literally sitting in the park and just looking, you know, just taking in the sunshine and reflecting on, okay, Duchess, how are you doing? You know, you said that you created this habit or this discipline roughly 10 years ago, right? Do you feel since you've passed that 40 mark and that you're now in your midlife phase, do you, do you can you feel that it's more, even more critical now, or do you feel a difference in your body or, you know, even, or how it's even benefited you more? Like how, how has that discipline and practice um, been enhanced since you've been in this phase? riding my bike. I never even imagined that I would (laughs) be in outdoors. If it's not next to a pool and a pina colada, I I don't want it. (laughs) But the love of the bike, the freedom of the bike has just been amazing for me. I love it. It's definitely been very therapeutic for me. Everyone knows that's my time. You know, I do allow the kids to do a ride on sometimes, but I enjoy writing for hours and it doesn't feel like it to me but also at the same time that is mommy's time so I think it's very important as mothers as entrepreneurs that we take that time because everyone is pulling at us at different angles and then for us to be in a very healthy space and productive I need that time by myself I think it definitely helped me <laughs> during this whole COVID thing be honest with you, it definitely has allowed me to say, take a deep breath, gain back to the family. I could step back out and still be productive. Um, if not, then I'll be, a, I don't think I would be a very nice person if I couldn't have that moment to myself. And that's not to sound selfish, but at the same time, it's a lot of pressure on the outside. But to maintain, we are trying to make sure our kids are healthy. Um, like I said before, I have a first responder husband that I'm always concerned about. My mother is 81 years old and the field that I am in, I have to be there at these sites. So I am taking on, on a lot in exposure, but I still need to be productive for my family. And I think probably most women, if not all, can relate to, to all of that, all that you just said. And, you know, whether you're a mother or not, or married or not, or just being a woman, um, and the phases that we go through and the, the, the stressors that we put on ourselves and in navigating this world as women, just kind of understanding how to not, I don't know if cope is the word, and I don't even know if navigate is the word, but it's, it's an, I want to, I'm aging and I want to embrace aging. And I also want to make sure that I'm aging well in our generation, uh, Gen Xers. I feel like we're like the youngest midlifers ever in terms of just attitude and lifestyle and all of the above. Right. And I, and then how do we make sure that we can, at least that's what we feel in our head. Right. And we're driven to manifest that because we're not the type to go to a job and come home and sit and watch TV. We're not that not it for us. But yet we know, although we wish we could be traveling weekly, we know that that's not realistic either, right? Because of our just life and our responsibilities. But how do we achieve 
I don't want to say everything because that's, you know, people always say I just want it all, but it's not necessarily wanting it all, but it's being able to balance it all, right? Because we, there's space for all of that, you know, there's space for the self-care, there's space for taking care of those that you love, there's space for enjoying life, whatever that is, whether it's, you know, being outdoors or travel, being by the pool with the pina colada, all of that, there, there is space for that. And then just how to learn how to, you know, create that balancing act for all of us. And I'm sure that's personalized for each person that's that's listening. So I think that the most important thing is that we do need to take these moments for ourselves. I think it's essential. I think it has definitely helped me navigate through this whole lockdown. When I was not able to go outside, I did see a difference in my mood. You know, I'm normal, right? I'm irritable. And being able to now have the freedom, well, semi-freedom, to go out is I'm definitely better. You know, it's a work in progress, and it's a probably a big driver as to why I'm doing the podcast and just bringing on all of the people that I love, like yourself, that I feel have, you know, a message to offer because it's... It's not easy. And we could say that it's not easy. Oh, no, it's not easy. It's I can tell you even having all the insight and can write the best treatment plan ever. I had a moment. I was in my closet. I literally was in my closet and having a moment because my my kid Zoom wasn't working. The dog was acting up. The washing machine was overflowing. I had to get on a conference call and I'm like, time out. I need a second. And that's okay. It's okay to have yeah, those meltdowns. Right, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, now, now I'm at the point when I need that moment. I just jump in the car and drive to Target and kind of walk around, walk, <laughs> walk the aisles of Target, not necessarily to shop, although I probably end up picking up a basket of stuff, but just kind of, you know, Okay, I just need to step out, and and I'm, I'm not even saying anything. I'm just like, I'll be back, and I'm and I'm out for, and it's Target is the closest, and I'm at a Target. And we need to give our ourselves these permission to be a little dysfunctional in a way. You know, it's okay, right? Um, but it's the part of getting back on the horse, right? Taking a deep breath and getting back on the horse. Let's say it's been so good to have you. Uh, that today. Um, but before we go, I want to make sure we talk about uh, your new venture that you launched this year, Essentials. Um, so please share with us how that came about and, and, and tell us about it. Right. Oh, yes, absolutely. So Shield Essentials is a personal protective equipment store. So in that we have nursing caps, PEs for the children, that's shields, that's masks, Um, and also little bags. The reason why I came about, I was talking with my niece and her working very close with COVID patients. And I noticed that her hairline was missing. I'm like, what's, you're losing hair? She was like, auntie, I have this on 18 hours. Like I don't, I have this on. She literally showed me what she had to do to get ready to go into the hospital. And I was like, oh my God. And so I was like, I'm going to make you a satin Um, cap. So I made, I met with a designer, created the satin cap for her, and she was able to um, put it on and wear it for 12 hours, no irritation. And I was like, oh my God. And then I showed another nurse friend and it just went from there. As far as the kids are concerned, the little pouches that I have, let's go forgetting (laughs) <laughs> the mask for my son. My teenager, she's pretty good. But my son, when we would get to the door, he doesn't have a mask. I'm like, you know what? You need a little bag. I can't take this anymore. So I came up with these little on-the-go pouches. Um, so he has his little pouch. He knows to put his mask. He has his antibacterial wipes in there. And he loves it. He's like, oh, we're going to the store. Let me get my, let me grab my bag. So that was really the passion behind it because as a, as a working mother, of operating not only my two businesses, but other um, treatment centers, I'm on the go a lot. And I don't always have the mask in my purse, (laughs) but my son giving him that chore and that responsibility and being able to help my niece with her, the cats has been the most rewarding experience so far. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really, really awesome idea. And I think the, the caps, because they're, they're, what's the proper term for the medical caps or... 
medical caps, right? Because we don't, it's not just for nurses, right? Anybody in the hospital, doctor's offices. I think in the past, I don't know, maybe even up to five or maybe 10 years, hair care for women of color, um, natural hair, satin and silk has become such an important aspect to understanding how we care for our hair and to line these caps with satin. I I think it's just solving a really big need out there. So I, I want you to share the website so you can tell people where to find you or find okay. these items. Okay. Oh, thank you. So it is shieldsessentials.com as well as the Rothman group.com. If you need any compliance or accreditation questions, we are here to help. Thank you, Duchess Rothman Jefferson for being my very first guest on Design Midlife. And I hope to chat with you again on air soon. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you. Yes. Yes.